Good morning, church. How are you guys doing? I see a couple people. <clears throat> Again, uh, just let me know, like comment that you're here. Sometimes, you know, I'll go back and look at the comment section and I'll miss stuff. And I feel so bad about that. Um, so comment and I will try my best. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Tom and Shirley. Morning, Rebecca. Morning, Kip. Hey, how are you guys doing? You guys still good? Warm? I'm trying to stay warm. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Joan and Kimmy and Russ. Um, yeah, it... Good morning, Deb. It is... It's cold. <laughs> like... And uh, I think it's, I think this is the heat wave part of this week. Um, so just praying for you guys. <laughs> Stay warm, best that we can. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Becky and Kimmy. Good morning, Ken Randall. Good morning, Johnny. Um, yeah, it's, it's cold. This is, guys, I've been telling you, like, winter is not my favorite. Not my favorite season. And, and this, this, you know, last week is why... <laughs> Um, hey, I wanted to share something with you. I, I'm not doing. I'm not doing this because you know gifts or whatever. But I was gifted this last night by a fantastic person. I'm not going to say names because they're getting pretty upset. But I just wanted to share this with you uh, because I think it's hilarious. Um, so it's a T-shirt and it's going to be backwards because I'm forward facing. I think. Um, but what it says is, "Don't hate me because I'm." beautiful yeah so i thought that was pretty fun <laughs> don't hate me because i'm beautiful and i'm working on it um and and since it's so cold this week it actually i'm pumped that i have it you know i'm glad that i've worked on this thing for four years um and this is all i've got so kimmy it is perfect chicken and noodle soup uh weather or chicken and noodles weather sorry good morning shirley Going back, trying to catch you guys. If it lets me. Thanks, Deb. I like it. I'm going to wear it. Um, so what was I going to... Oh, yeah. Chicken and noodle. Um, I made uh, chili the other night. And if you guys know anything about chili, no matter what type of chili it is, it's always better leftovers. Um, so for lunch today leftover chili. I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, good morning, Jackie. Just trying to fill you guys in on what's, what's been happening. Good morning, Steve. Um, other than that, I mean, just being cold and yeah, <laughs> being cold and eating some chili, I guess. Good morning, Doug. <sighs> well, let's see what time it is right at nine o'clock i got on a little bit later um so we're let a couple people catch up but we're gonna jump right into it we're gonna be in exodus chapter two today for the devotion exodus chapter two um <clears throat> you know good morning joyce good morning cheryl um you know exodus two twelve um it is an interesting verse and there's <laughs> As I was reading and just kind of studying through this week, um, I was brought back to this. I was brought back to Exodus 2, um, specifically like just the, the story of, of Moses calling in general. So probably next week we're being three um, and we're slowly just work down it. Um, but I really wanted to start here just because I do I do believe that there's a really good lesson here as, as I do through all scripture. So um, we're going to pray. And we're going to jump right into it. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today, God. We just ask that, you know, you keep people safe as they're traveling, going about. I pray that, you know, electricity stays on, that the heat is still there, and people can stay warm through this cold that, that is coming in. Uh, we ask that as we jump into your word that you do just help us. You you talk to us. You, you guide us through it. You teach us the lessons that you have for us. God, we love you. We trust you. Pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Exodus 2.12 says this. It says, he, he looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hid him 
in the sand. Sorry, 11 and 12. I wrote down the wrong. So 11, one day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their burdens and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He looked this way and that and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. Now I told you that this is uh, you know, an interesting verse. Um, we have a very interesting and a very kind of sad story in the life of Moses. You know, at the beginning of this chapter, in chapter 2, we see the beautiful story of God's preservation. The beautiful story of God's preservation, you know, for the life of Moses. You know, Pharaoh, at the Pharaoh at this time made a, made a, a rule or law to the, the midwives at the time that if any of the Hebrew women were to have sons, they were you know, to not help, <laughs> uh, basically to have all the Hebrew boys killed. So what the Pharaoh did for evil, you know, having all the Hebrew boys killed, God meant for good. You know, that there, there was no other way that Moses would have been in Pharaoh's house had it not been for that basket that his mother placed him in. But that's not the point of the devotion today. But I just wanted to say, you know, beginning of chapter 2, we see the beautiful story of God's preservation. And now when we get to, you know, verse 11, we see one day when Moses was around the age of 40, right? One day when Moses had grown up, he was out walking and he saw a terrible sight. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. You know, the very beginning of Exodus tells us that, the the Israelites or the Hebrews grew to a large number. And the Pharaoh at the time said, we got to do something about this. Because if they wanted to revolt, they, they could win. Um, so they put them into bondage or into slavery. And so we see an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, which is probably common practice at that time. We continue in the text and we read that Moses killed the Egyptian and that he hit him in the sand or in the dirt. And I told you this is an interesting verse. So you could be like, what is our lesson here? You know, the lesson, the lessons could be many, you know, that there, there really could be a lot, but today we're going to be looking at the difference of ministering according to a need or according to obedience. And I truly do believe that that is what happened here with Moses. You know, Moses wanting to do something big for God. Moses steps in on his own strength and his own power. And that was his mistake. You know, Moses was doing this in his own strength and his own power. And it ultimately backfired on him. <clears throat> You see, even though Moses wanted to be involved in service, you know, uh, that Moses wanted to be about the things of God, the fact that Moses stepped in on an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, I don't think is out of the character of God, right? The, the Israelites were God's people, and he told them that they were his people, and he loved them. And, and you know, if a, if, if a father loves their child... You're not going to want harm to happen to them. I, so I don't think him, you know, stepping in on an Egyptian um, beating Hebrew was out of the character of God. Like he was looking out for his people. So you see, even though Moses wanted to be involved in service, we read um, in verse 12, we read that he looked this way and that. But Moses' problem was he never looked up. He ministered to a need in his own strength and his own power instead of according to obedience. Now we know, you know, the end of this story. We know that God brings his people out of Egypt and that the Egyptian army is decimated in the sea. It's just that Moses 
stepped in first. You know, and if we even keep reading into this section right towards the end of it, um, in verse 14, it's, he, he starts seeing, you know, two Hebrews fighting uh, the next day, you know, struggling together. And he said to the man in the wrong, why do you strike your companion? In verse 14, he answered, who made you a prince and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. So <clears throat> we keep reading this section. We see that Moses wasn't even successful in hiding one Egyptian. And if we're being honest with ourselves, some of us do that same thing today. Not hiding an Egyptian, but we venture out on our own strength and in our own power and with good intentions, intentions, but we fail in ministering for Jesus and we fail in ministering according to the obedience of Jesus. Church, the, the lesson that we could take, if, if it's a one sentence lesson you're looking for, is that the work of the Spirit cannot be done by the work of the flesh. Period. No if, ands, or buts about it. The work of the Spirit cannot be done by the work of the flesh. So today, you know, the rest of the week, um, you know, at least until tomorrow, and there's another morning devotion, I guess the question that we could seek, uh, meditate on, study through, start reading, start pressing into our relationship with Jesus would be, church, what is the Lord telling you to do? We're not called to minister for a need. We're called to minister according to obedience. You know, you don't have to look this way or that way. We just need to look up. We need to be obedient and we need to wait for him. So church, that's what I got for you today. Um, I'm going to continue praying for you guys uh, just as the day goes out. Um, honestly, love you guys. God bless.